stop. Time of death, 145. You guys can go ahead and prepare. We'll uh, get the family prepped for the time in the back of the bedside. Back, but unfortunately, Abby died. Absolutely. Oh, I just wanted to take a second to see if you had any questions or anything that you wanted to like to go see her. Um, Charles is going to go with you, and then would you like to go back with her as well? Ms. Painter, if you please come out. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm under the penalties of perjury the testimony you're about to give this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Will you please have a seat right up here? If you can pull your seat up, we have a microphone right there. Thank you. If you could please state your name. Maya Painter. Your age? 18. Your date of birth? September 4th, 1998. Thank you. Counsel. Thank you, Judge. Might I uh, tell the court what led to this decision to, to drink and then drive? I didn't think about the possible consequences. I just was trying to have fun, and I obviously failed to do so. It's, it was not anything I should have done. I should have thought about what would happen. How you feel about your actions? I'm so sorry. I wish I hadn't taken your children. If I could go back and change what I did, I would in a heartbeat. I wish it would have been anybody but them. They were such great, kind people. I mean, 
they didn't deserve this and it's my fault and I'm so sorry to bring that pain to you. You could have asked Anna to drive the car back, but you chose to drive? Yes. After drinking? That's correct. And how long have you had your driver's license? About a year. So would you agree that you're not a very experienced driver? Yes. And not only did you drink and drive, but you also decided to text while driving, is that correct? Yes. And you understand that texting while driving is, um, uh, that is a distraction as well? Yes. A conscious decision to drink the old two or three in 15 minutes, half an hour, while your friend was watching and waiting. It's not a mistake. It's not a mistake to make that decision. That's a conscious decision on your part to do that which you did. It wasn't a mistake. And then, because it's so important to take phone calls or to take and respond to texts because we can't wait 10 minutes to make that response, you decide, I'm going to, res I'm going to, I'm going to try to drive. I've been driving for a little over a year, but that's okay, I can do it without any problem. Well, I've been drinking. Put the drinking aside. <laughs> let's, let's compartmentalize this a little bit. We'll put that over here. Now we're looking at the texting. So you're driving, looking down, or maybe, I don't know what kind of phone you have, it's, if you can do it with one or two hands. Maybe you're driving with your knees, I don't know. But you don't see the car coming because you're texting. There are too many defendants that come into this courtroom in this type of offense. And I hear the same thing every time, Mr. Lloyd. This will never happen again. But you know, I never hear the person saying that tell me that if it happens again, that person will take the place in jail. Never heard that. Words are cheap, although yours maybe not so much. I can't trust that's going to happen, or it's not going to happen again. You, you, you killed two people. You made, a, you made a conscious decision to perform an act which resulted in the death of two people. Do I think you intended for that to happen? No, I don't think you intended for those two people to die. As was mentioned, this is a crime of violence. Shooting a gun into a crowd is a crime of violence shooting the gun in a crowded room, doing something like that. Maybe you weren't aiming it at anyone in, in particular, but it's a good chance you're gonna hit somebody. That's what you did as soon as you turned that car on after you got behind the wheel. You won't be hugging your parents before you leave this courtroom today in handcuffs.
Alexa Marie Ross, age 16, of West Lafayette, passed away unexpectedly on Wednesday, April 13th from injuries sustained in a motor vehicle accident while on her way home from school. Texting and overcorrection are suspected factors in the crash. Crimson and bears are still yours completely, yours as we go. Sarah Cassis Salinas, age 17, was born in Pomona, California on October 3rd, 1998. Sarah is survived by her parents, Emma Salinas and Armando Casas, her younger siblings, Angel, Josie, Cyana, and Natalie Casas Salinas. age 17. Precious daughter, granddaughter, sister, and niece was tragically taken from us by a drunk driver on April 13th, 2016. I have some unfortunate news that I have to be the deliverer of. Uh, Catherine was involved in a car accident uh, involving a drunk driver. Was, um, she was taken to the emergency room with some severe injuries and she has unfortunately died at the hospital. I'm so, so sorry for your yep. loss. Where, where is she at now? She's at St. Elizabeth, and I'm happy to take you there if you'd like to go see her. Yeah. Like to do that? Yeah. She didn't feel anything, right? I couldn't she, understand. She didn't feel anything as quick? She's okay? We can't answer. I, I, I can't answer that really. Um, I guess you, you just have to rely on your faith. You know that you just have to rely okay. on God for that. Thank you. 